What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. As we close out the year, I like to take time to look back at all the blessings and inspirations that our guests have brought to both you and I. This month, I have curated a very special lineup of guests that include never before heard excerpts from interviews, as well as the top rated episodes by you, our Empowered Within community. If you'd like to be in the know of all of our events, giveaways, and new episodes, head over to jenniferpilates.com and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for being a part of our Empowered Within community. Enjoy today's episode. Welcome to Empowered Within a soul-clenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great show. Today's guest, Teresa Allison, is a self-made success story, mom, mentor, and author of Playing for Keeps, How a 21st Century Businesswoman Beat the Boys. To help others succeed, Allison openly shares how she became financially independent at the age of 38 when her company was sold and retired at the early age of 43 to spend quality time with her children. Allison was born in Hollywood, grew up in La Canada, and currently lives in Huntington Beach, California, where she mentors her three children and others to succeed in business and life. Her work has appeared in the Los Angeles Times, Go Banking Rates, Yahoo Finance, Shout Out LA, Huntington Beach News, KVTA News Talk 1950, Thrive Global, Voice America Business Channel, and many, many more. Welcome to the show, Allison. I'm so honored to have you here today. Thank you for having me, Jennifer. Oh, this is so great. So let's start with How it all began for you, because I know a lot of people are going to go, well, wait a minute. She retired at 43. I want the story on that. Let's spill the tea on how that happened, because it's an incredible story. Well, you know, I I was an athlete growing up. So, um, I mean, it really started where I was on the playground in elementary school and I always wanted to beat the boys. So I I just thought if I could be picked first, then that would be awesome. Right. Right. So I played sports and uh, as I went through high school, I took those same ingredients that I used in sports into business as a woman. And I found that it was like the visualization that I used in sports, the I can attitude. I took all those same things and just was, you know, I wanted to win in business. So I built my book of business and I worked with Lloyd. I worked with a company or I was became a partner in a company that um, worked with Lloyd's of London. So you can imagine all men. Yeah. Such so, a big deal. Um, yeah. So, I mean, as you'll see, and I think you've read the book, I use a lot of humor. I, I self-deprecation when things happen, you know, I, there's a little bit of synchronicity and whatnot from, cause I, I had an encounter with Wayne Dyer back in 1992. So that kind of framed quite a bit of just how I looked at things going forward. So, yeah, I mean, you used kind of a mishmash of everything. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you give to someone if you go, wow, well, I'm not an athlete and I don't have that. I want to beat the boys attitude. Maybe right. I can't do that. Do you have advice for someone who might not be that driven in that way? Absolutely. In 2008, my son, who's now 30, uh, came to me and he said, mom, will you write your story? I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So I wrote the story and at the end, I had one page that had lessons learned. And I thought, okay, he's not going to read the rest of it, right? Because that's just a lot of boring stuff. 
But if he, if he can get the lessons learned, he's going to be successful. He did that. He went to UCLA. That was pinned above his desk. And so he was always like thinking about what I had written down. And he became one of the youngest principals in a multi-billion dollar company in headquartered in New York back when he, well, when he was 27. So I realized after that, oh my goodness, I got to share this with people. Because if it worked for him, you know, I just mentored him with all of those same things that I learned and be true to you, be genuine, use humor. I can, and I have, there's 16 pearls of wisdom and those pearls of wisdom, if you follow them or you give that, my book to your kids and whatnot, I can guarantee you they will be successful in one way or another. So I think it's great. 16 pearls of wisdom is amazing. That's what he had above was just those 16 principles. That was it. That's amazing. So what happened? He graduated and then he went to work for this company. He's still with them. He's been with them for eight years. So until he became a principal, I mentored him like, we talk all the time, mom, will this happen? And I would say, oh, well, have you checked this? And I'd be like, well, you make sure you look, make your boss look good and back your teammates up. And so I did do some mentoring. And then when he became principal, we kind of became colleagues after that. I would just say, hey, what's going on now? You know, kind of thing. What a success. I For you to have that success is so amazing. But then to be able to help and mentor and do that for your own children, I can only imagine the sense of fulfillment that that gives you. Yeah, it, it really does give a lot of fulfillment. And part part of the, in my business, many people would hand off businesses to the next generation. And I, and I didn't have that because I wanted to get out, right? And so that was my way of being able to stay here. That's wonderful. And I read about you've done pretty much the same thing with your daughter too, but just in another aspect. Yes. Um, She, although she's now kind of in the occupational therapy world, but she ended up going to the world championships for synchronized skating. And she was the one that sat next to Wayne Dyer on the plane, by the way. I think you may have read that or you know that story. But so yeah, same principles, you know, I can be true to you, you know, pat your teammates on the back, just, you know, don't give up all of those same things that you would use in business. She used in her career to get to the world championships when she was uh, 20. I love about your 16 pearls of wisdom in the book. It's, this isn't rocket scientists. This is such a kind layman way of saying, here's what everybody's been talking about for years. Let me just give you this piece of gold. Just use it. And it's so brilliant that it's brilliant. It's simple. It's simple brilliancy. Well, and you know what, Jennifer, Um, really the basis behind everything I've done and my father, as you've read that story, is that we're just kind people. And I think that when you are kind and you have gratitude, really good things happen, as you know. As I was on my journey of writing the book and putting everything together, I'm I'm like, wow, it's kindness. It's being a good person. And it's just being so thankful for what you have. And there's an abundance that comes with that. There really Um, is. Mm -hmm. Because you're vibrating so high, you're drawing all that in abundance in all areas. We're not just talking financial abundance. And and you're, again, a perfect example of that. And it is such a young age. So it's completely possible for anyone to catch up at this point. Yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Set your goal, visualize that goal. And I always say, think from the end. So wherever you want to be, wherever you want to get to start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And then stuff just will unfold. And you just need to be in tune with those synchronicities that occur that keep you on the right path. I love that. How have you found synchronicity and manifesting to be an important part of your life and success? Well, okay. I really didn't realize this until I wrote the book, but my dad back in 1983, he really taught me kind of that foundation, but he painted this picture and it was a picture of an Italian scene. And that was in 83. And then in 2003, went on a Mediterranean cruise with him and my kids. My dad and I got up early and we went to go look at the sunrise and we came around the corner in Venice it was the same exact picture. And I'm like, dad, dad, you painted that. And he kind of just smiled. He just like, like, oh yeah. Okay. I said, dad, no, we have that back at home. That same, you know, he's like, yeah. And so I realized now that he had taught me over the years, kind of the manifestation portion of just really looking at things and then being a kind person and then going in that direction. And he also had, uh, he was not only an artist, but he also did calendars, which he, he drew on. And those are in the book. Just to give you such an example. So I used that manif- manifestation visual visualization in business. And I would visualize before I would go to a big contract flying to Alabama. And I'd be like, I'm going to visualize them giving me the business, signing the broker of record, I'm going to visualize them talking and hear them talking about we're going with her because she can give us the best service. I did that the entire way and walked out with the business. So 
from the business aspect, I was able to incorporate that. But my dad on one of his calendars in 92, like it was in April and it said, Wayne Dyer, a spiritual solution to, there's a spiritual solution to every problem. Four months later, we were on a plane coming back from Hawaii and my eight-year-old daughter sat next to Wayne Dyer and she went on to the synchronized skating championships. It's like, come on guys. (laughs) I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. Like it just, (laughs) mic drop, like it just doesn't. That's amazing. And I didn't get that until I was at the end of the book. And I kept thinking, I always think, why, 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 why? I'm like, oh my gosh, synchronicity is the cornerstone of his teachings. And (laughs) so it's just, yeah. Really gives you the chills. It does. I have um, such goosebumps right now. So, uh, yeah. And then my dad, when I went back and look at the calendars, I'm like, okay, synchronicity is a huge thing in this book at the end. I'm like, he had to have written something on another, on another calendar. And I went to the first calendar in the top left corner said in all caps, synchronicity. Goosebumps. It's just wild. I love it when things like that just unfold. It's almost yeah. like gifts that just the gift that keeps giving. Just to yeah. let you know, like, I'm here. I still got you. And, and as you know, you got to be looking for it, right? You got to mm-hmm. like be... Have your eyes open. You have to be active. You have to take action in what you're trying to bring forth for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. I have a question then. You wrote in the book, actually, as soon as you recognize that your business success is not all about you, the world will fall into sync to meet you. Mm -hmm. That gave me pause. And Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, because there's so many times people will say this, it's what you do, it's who you are. I would love for you to elaborate on that statement and what that means. I feel like there's so many out there listening going, really? Yeah. So the whole premise of being kind and kind of watching out for others and taking care of others and whatnot has been a core, of course, my father and I. And I realized in business, you, you carry that. And instead of competing with your office mates or competing with your boss. I told Michael, make your boss look good. Take care of your office mates, help them, give them some help. Cause guess what? The universe just like, like, will. not that you're doing it for that reason, but you will be taken care of it, Even, you know, in your company, the higher ups will see, wow, he, he watched out for his boss. That's like a, that's a good guy. We want to keep him. And so it's like, you know, yes, we're all ambitious. We all would like to get somewhere, but how we get there is important and who we are as we get there and what we do for people when we get there. I also say that when you get there, you figure out how you give back. So it's kind of a giving back thing all the way before you get there. You know, it's kind of like you're manifesting, you're going to get there, but I'm going to help people before I even get to the point, Mm -hmm. right? Right. And then, of course, you know, I, I tied it together with synchronized skating because, and she went to the world championship. So it was the world will fall in sync at your feet, which is just so beautiful. It's true. If we if you can find that alignment and I know a lot of people struggle with that. What one piece of advice would you give to someone who goes, well, this is all well and good. I've got my manifesting board. I'm manifesting and it's just not coming together. What would you say to that person? Infinite patience, infinite patience. OK, So we've got kindness, we've got gratitude, we've got infinite patience. And I have been in a spot where I'm like, even with this book, you know, as I rolled it out and I'm like, gosh, it's just not doing anything. And and I made one change. What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. You heard it through the grapevine here, the story of dry farm wines. Pure, natural wines begin from a healthy farm and ends with a vibrant sip from biodiverse vineyards to antioxidant-rich grapes. Dry farm wines, pure, natural wines, express a completely unique wine experience, conveniently curated with wines of your choice on a schedule that's right for you. 
I fell in love with Dry Farm Wines about three years ago after I noticed I was having allergies drinking wine. When introduced to Dry Farm Wines, what I loved about them is that they're organic and biodynamic. They're vegan and lower in alcohol, sugar-friendly to keto and paleo, and free of toxic additives and low to no sulfates. You are drinking a healthy glass of wine. Not only that, they have an incredible happiness promise. If you don't like a wine for any reason, they will either replace the bottle or refund you in full, whichever you prefer. To receive your penny bottle of wine, follow the link in the show notes so that Dry Farm Wine knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Dry Farm Wines, pure, natural, great wines from around the world delivered to your door. I put myself on the cover. That's all I did. When people had told me before in the beginning, you need to do this, and I'm like, eh, it's about my heritage. I don't want to go on the cover. When things kind of stalled, I paid attention. And as soon as I went on the cover, let me just tell you, I'm saying facts. I became a bestseller. I got an international finalist book award. And I'm not saying that to be boastful, but I am trying to say it to say, if you are at a stall in a, something that you are trying to manifest, take a look at what's going on because maybe how you thought you were, it was going to manifest may not be that way. Mm-hmm. You may need to just Do something different. Listen to yourself and listen to what's going on and listen to what people are saying around you. Are you ready to lose inches, increase strength and tone your body from head to toe? Are you ready for a total body, mind, and spirit transformation? I am excited to announce that I am launching my exclusive eight-week Pilates Return to Life training program. This will give you an opportunity to have a total body, mind, and spirit transformation of health and wellness to a new lifestyle. Imagine in seven days you will feel a difference, in 14 days you will see a difference, and in eight weeks you will have your new Pilates body. So what do you say? Want to join me on the mat? Head over to jenniferpilates.com today. Space is limited. Use a special promo code EW and the word special, EW special to receive $200 off while space is available. Head on over to jenniferpilates.com and I'll see you on the mat. That's, you know? Right. That's huge. Because a lot of times we miss, we're so in our head that we miss what's coming by. And there's always that one person you give so much. And then there's always going to be somebody that turns around and gives you this amazing piece of advice or, or wisdom. And that aha moment strikes. Well, and you, you know, a big, another thing is you have to stay out of your ego. You got to get the ego aside because it's not all about you. Remember? Right. So you just got to put this, put the ego aside. And I'm just like, okay, Lord, what do I have to do? Just give me a sign, you know? And then I'll also, I'll also be like, I'll be like, I went, I went on a walk and I, I wrote, wrote a blog the other day and, and Wayne Dyer had an, a thing about a butterfly on his finger and he had had it on his finger for an hour and it was just about what it represented for him. So I went on a walk and I, I'm like, okay, Lord, if I'm on the right path with my book, give me a sign. I walk like half a block and there are these two monarch butterflies like spinning with each other and they're coming to me. And I'm like, I got to get pictures. And I did because no one's going to believe this. And yeah, so that's, I'm on the right path. You're on the right path. The transformation, the wings are spreading. Everything's coming together. I love that. Right. The two together in sync. I love and, that. And literally in the picture, and someone you have to go to my, my blog mm-hmm. to look at it, but in the picture, there's a white arrow just going straight the way I was walking. It's like, keep going. Oh, such goosebumps. So synchronicity is really huge in your world, <laughs> to say the yeah. least. It's huge. And another piece, which was way cool. I learned so much from your book, so much history and all this. I was like, oh my gosh. So well, I have it now. My mom was actually just here and she was like, well, I want to read it. I'm like, not till after the interview, mom. I'm like, you can't have it yet. <laughs> But so, yeah, so you talked a lot about your unknown heritage and how that unfolded and really helped. Will you share a little bit about it? Because I found it to be so in awe of it. I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm curious how you found that. Cause I'm like, did she do 23 and me? Like, what did she do? And now I feel like I need to do that. Like everyone's asking that same thing. <laughs> um, my dad, my dad in 1992 started the research for our family. And he found that my grandfather um, had competed against Mulholland in an international aqueduct with the president of Mexico. 
And I was too busy growing up. I'm like, but yeah, dad, whatever. And water's so boring in California. Seriously, dad. <laughs> and then he found this other stuff. But then he later on, he said, I promised him before he passed away that I would write the book. And there were many things that he couldn't research. So I spent three bucks. I felt like Dora the Explorer. I, I put the aqueduct map in my backpack. I put the picture of him with the president. I put whatever. And I went to the library. And all of this stuff started coming out. You know, I knew about the gold rush and then my great, great grandfather's partner and whatever stood next to Lincoln. And it was just, and then Winston Churchill. I'm like, okay, okay. And it, I really felt Jennifer, I, I kept, again, I always ask why. I'm like, why are all these big things in my heritage? And I believe that it's because of the message of synchronicity. Because the heritage, there was synchronicity. I mean, everything in my life has been that way. And so what better way to get attention to have, than to have these bigger than life characters? And, and I've got to say, yeah, well, yeah, okay. And then look what happened here. And then Wayne Dyer. And then, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. But you I mean could... You could go to the library or, or 23andMe. I didn't do that because I had printed things that I could put together. But many people do do 23andMe, and it's really interesting. I know. I'm tempted to do it. I have a lot of paperwork from my grandfather that just passed. So I have a lot. I have a half of the family tree, like a good portion of it. But I know there's more to it. I know there's something really spectacular, and I'm dying to dig into it and yeah. really see. And your book really inspired me. I was like, okay, I think it's like time to dig in and see where else it goes. There's so many resources that you can tap online. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about, in your book, you talk about your Lucy moments. And we talked earlier off air about how I'm a huge Lucille Ball fan as well. I, this just like cracked me up. I would love to know what were your top two Lucille Ball moments that you've oh, had. Oh, goodness. Or that you considered oh. your top two. <laughs> wow. And see, I'd love to reverse it and ask you which one you like the best. But I know. Okay, so I don't know that you can top the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. It was back in the 90s, and I had won a trip to go. You know, I, I couldn't have gone on my own, but I won a trip because of the business I was placing. And I brought the gal that worked with me. We ended up staying in a castle at the top of a mountain after we were in the flea-ridden room of the maids in Cannes. And it was just like this, this, this episode of Lucy. And I go to pull out my ball gown because the next night we're supposed to go to uh, Prince Albert is holding like a, a gala affair for the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. And my dress is too long. So I'm like, I'm like no problem. So I, I call up the concierge and I ask for, I'm like, do you have any scotch tape? And you can imagine what they're thinking because they're French and I'm American. So, uh, and a woman, right. unaccompanied, There's, there are no men. So I get the tape and Joanne tapes it all up and we're taping it all up and, and I'm like, no problem, got this. And the next night we go down, we, we have a car that's taking us down and we get out and I get out first and I'm walking and my tape completely comes unraveled and my hem comes down. She's behind me like Ethel trying to keep the dress and trying not to have anyone because we're walking behind Prince Albert and it ended up being Hugh Grant and Elizabeth Hurley. And then some princess, whoever Prince Albert was with. Some right? princess, some random princess. Some princess. And, <laughs> and I'm an American woman, unaccompanied, no diamonds, right? So the, and they're like, oh my God, what do we do with her? And she has scotch tape. So, you know, the whole night, I mean, it was just like more things, not as, not as funny as the scotch tape one, but yeah. That was my favorite one. And I'm so glad that you said, because I'm like, I really want to hear the story from her lips because this is priceless. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. That was my top. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. So what was your second then? Oh gosh. Hurricanes and alligators. <laughs> Did you read that? You remember yeah. that one? Yeah. So I'm flying to, um, I'm flying. It was always me and my partners, the boys. It was always Teresa and the boys. Right. And, um, so I, I, I was flying alone to, it was South Carolina, Kiowa, South Carolina, and we're flying to Atlanta and Weather's really bad. And remember, California girl here, I'm not used to bad weather. Um, and, and we go to try and land in Atlanta and the, and the plane tips to the left. And I'm thinking, this is, this is wind shear in my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, we have wind shear. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm closing my eyes. And then we, we go up and we circle and then they take us to a regional airport in Florida. I, am not, I don't remember where it was, but it was some little teeny airport. And so we get out and normal, normal women would say, I'm calling it a day. I'm going to get a hotel, right? Well, not, not me. you. <laughs> my, 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 you know, great grandfather came through the, 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 the planes. I'm going to take a car and I'm going to drive through the hurricane, 
right? So I get the car and I'm, dri- I'm driving up the coast and it's raining so hard you can't see. And I'm thinking, I'm looking around and these huge green bushes and all of a sudden the banjos from Deliverance go off in my mind. I'm thinking, A, I could pull over and Lord knows what's gonna happen if I pull over or I just keep on driving and just like, you know, like this. And I finally get there and my partners, God bless them. I, I put my stuff in my room and I go to the bar and they're like, oh my God, you made it. I'm like, yeah, you guys really waited to have a drink. Like you were worried about me here <laughs> in the hurricane. <laughs> so. Um, you know, and then the story goes, um, one of the days I was on the golf course with one of my partners and they have big alligators. Now, you're yep. used to that. We have them. I take pictures and put them on my Instagram in the lake that's out here. And people are like, that's, that's, that's your backyard. I'm like, yeah, that's my backyard with that alligator in it. I walk fast. Oh. Yeah. It's crazy. Like when I see the alligators, I, I, I stop and take a video and then I forget, like, you're not in a zoo. This is your backyard and they, they go fast. They go, did you know that a big one can go like 40 some miles an hour? Did you well, know that? that? Okay. All I know is that their, their mouth is so big. They could reach me at time. I'm, it's just but they're I, fast and they can go straight up. I'm actually glad I didn't know that to be honest with you. Can, I, I, mm-hmm. That's why they tell you if you're going, if you're going to run from an alligator, you zigzag. Now how they don't know how to zigzag. I don't know, but you're supposed to zigzag when you run. Cause they can't do that, but they're ridiculously fast and they can literally go like straight up a tree, up a wall. Okay, Stop it. That is just insane. <laughs> I know. Insane. I know. I was on the, I was on the golf course. We were in the golf cart and this huge big daddy was on there. And I looked at Bob and I'm like, so I go, doesn't, doesn't that make you nervous? And he goes, no, all I have to do is outrun you. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. (laughs) (laughs) That is my life. I love it. (laughs) That's hysterical. Nice friend. Wait a minute. (laughs) Thanks. I mean, thanks. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if anyone would be the one that was outrun, it would be me because I wouldn't think quite quickly that, you know, what was going on. So well, a lot of people don't know the zigzag. I've had to, I've, I mean, I've had to adjust a lot, even though I grew up on the East Coast. I didn't grow up in Florida. I grew up on Cape Cod up in Boston. I mean, oh. you know, I was just a country bumpkin on my little island up there. And, and then I was in the desert for so many years. And now oh. here, you know, we, we didn't have that in the desert. We had haboobs. You know, the big, my biggest crisis was a dust storm. Yeah. And now you just don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> well, I was baptized by fire on that one for sure. <laughs> oh my God, you totally were. Oh my goodness. So let's talk about so much fun, your velvet glove approach. I think this is something that is just amazing and so important for everyone to take away to learn from you. I want to, I'm like, oh, I can't. I'm like, if we could have just like did every one of your principles, every one of the 16, I would have done that. But we want people yeah. to read the book. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. so the Velvet Club for women, I, you know, my signature was always, um, I mean, it was kind of the, the, the Lucy philosophy of like, you would see all sides of me, right? So I started early on, try, you know, I was blonde, I wore glasses, I tried to look smart, and it just, it just wasn't me. So um, I mean, I'm smart, but just, you know, so uh, I always was just feminine, but firm. I always felt as a woman that, especially a woman, a, a, an executive, or even any woman in business, that you don't have to be harsh, you don't have to be tough. Mm-hmm. I think that when you can be feminine, but firm and, and then soft, but strong, that whatever situation that you are in as a woman, you can maneuver, you can come out successfully. And one of the things that I, I used to say is I could go into a meeting with men and before I would get there, I'd be like, okay, I'm, I'm putting my ego in a box because, you know, this is what I'm going to do with them. They won't know it. I'd go in and I crack a joke and get them to just relax. Right. So it was kind of like, they didn't know this, but I was having them all put their ego in a box. And then after that, we, and I wasn't, it wasn't just about me. It was just, okay, let's do business. So it's just, if you can have opposing traits as a woman and know it's okay to be feminine and know it's okay to be firm and ask for that raise, you'll be more successful. I think that people respect when you are yourself. And if you can adopt something, just some kind of a way to be able to know, okay, I need to be a little softer here. And maybe, you know, a little more firm here, 
I'm going to ask for this raise and know that in, inside that if they don't give me the raise, I can vote with my feet and I can walk. So I knew what my options were, but I, I was nice about it. I was like, I know my worth in the industry. So, you know, with a smile. Right. With a smile. And I think that's important. Being authentic, knowing your worth is so important because some people will be like, oh yeah, I didn't get that job. And then just go back to work with their head down. It's like, well, no, you don't have to do that. You have choices. Everything is your choice. And you know, it always comes back to what feels good, what doesn't, what's for your best and highest good. When you were working, did you have the philosophy of I am a hustler or I am flowing and aligning? Oh, I was a hustler. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was just, cause you got to remember guys, I started on the playground going against the boys. So, um, she was beating up all the boys. You got to read the book for the stories. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) so, you know, I could go toe to toe with them, but I could make them laugh. I knew how to Mm -hmm. like get them, kind of get them off guard and then close the deal. (laughs) So, So, yeah, I mean, definitely there are times in your life in many times in your life you need to be in the flow but for me I was competitive and I wanted to win ego 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 but that that allowed me to also survive in a man's world yeah it served you very well and it served you in such an incredible way to be able to present something so that someone could find their flow and be in alignment who may not know how to hustle or who isn't a hustler which I think is so important. And that's something for people to think about too when going in to read this book. There's just, there's so many different avenues that this can help and bring you forward. And it's something that can help in all areas of your life, I feel. I, uh, it's funny, I, I had, I felt that this book had something for everyone. And I also wanted the book, I wanted you to walk away after you read the end because it was so kind of mystical at times that, you know, the, the movie Field of Dreams? Mm-hmm where they say, if you build it, they will come. And then they said, well, people will come and just want to sit. They just kind of like feel good about sitting in the field and doing whatever. And I, and I wanted the book to be like that. I wanted it to be that you read the book and you just like, I could take this piece. I could take that piece. And in fact, I'm going to give it to my mother to read next. Exactly. She's like, oh, you have an interview. Can I just hang out? I'm like, no, (laughs) she was so (laughs) funny. Oh my God. She's a hoot. So she she probably loves Lucy moments. She totally, (laughs) we we're Lucy and Ethel Ethel all the time on our road trips. Like (laughs) it's nonstop. Whatever can happen is going to happen. It's hysterical between us. I mean, even just a trip to the grocery store is an event. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to my world. (laughs) Exactly. The beginning of the book, when you describe yourself, that's when I I fell in love with you instantly. I was like, she's my girl. (laughs) She's my girl. Um, so I never knew really why. My dad was a really, really kind person. And there wasn't a person that he didn't like or a person that didn't love him. And he, we would be somewhere and he could talk to anyone on the elevator. We'd be waiting in the doctor's area. And he, by the time we, I'd come out or whatever, he'd be best friends with the guy next or the woman next to him or whatever. I, I describe myself as the quintessential rose on Titanic. I mean, I'm happy in first class. We can talk about a deal. We can laugh, whatever. And I'm very happy in steerage, dancing on the tables, kicking it up, having fun. It doesn't really matter where I am or who I'm with. I just have a, my dad taught me to have genuine connections with people. And it was a gift. It really was. I just don't, I don't, you know, people don't even know. It's it's funny. People that like meet me now or whatever, or before I wrote the book, they're like, we didn't know you were so successful. I'm like, well, I was, I was a room mom and I was doing this and I just, I don't live. I'm just don't really live that way, you know? Right. So, um, cause I, I just like to be about people. Right. And that's so rare and so wonderful and just amazing that you've instilled that and the gift. I mean, your book is a true gift. It really is, especially I feel in this day and time that we're in, this is the exact kind of material that everyone needs to be reading so that it isn't about the diamonds and the ego. This is about who you are, who you can help and moving forward. Just being, you know, all all around being grounded. Mm -hmm, Truly. Because we're all just, we're all here. We're all the same. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it a little bit, but I still, I'm feeling like there's still a little bit more of this onion to peel back. What is one thing that you hope that someone truly walks away with from your book? My main thing and the main theme of of the book is I can, it's that pearl of wisdom. And it's just, don't say I can't just, just always have an, I can attitude, try to find your passions because it's so easy to have the I can attitude when you have, you're following your heart and your passions. Be positive and stay out of negativity. 
So, you know, the way you manifest is, you know, whatnot, you have to, to be on the positive to get to the vibes to manifest. And if you're just, if you have a negative, you know, I can't, it's not happening, whatever that happens. So that's the biggest thing is that I can, I think my dad taught me that I learned that in sports and in business. So I love that. That's beautiful. So we're getting to that time in the show, Allison, and I have this very special question for you. Are you ready for it? (laughs) I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) What is one thing that no one knows about Teresa Allison? Oh gosh, you're throwing a zinger. Oh my gosh. Can I, oh gosh, you may have to ask me another question while I think about that. Jennifer, you're the first one that's thrown that at me in these podcasts. Um, my goal is for you to have an interview like no other interview. That is my, <laughs> that truly is my goal when I go into every interview. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, Jennifer. Um, I would tell, you know, and not a lot of people know this about me. And then I'm, I say this to be authentic. So it's not like I have everything together. I've suffered from depression a lot and it was mostly after my dad passed, but it was really debilitating. And so I know that a lot of women and a lot of men and everyone ha- have gone there. And I guess I would share that because I think sometimes people think that I've got it all together and uh, you know, that I necessarily haven't gone through hard times. And I'm also someone to, to be able to say to you that you can have a debilitating depression and you can make it on the other side. Cause that's when I wrote my book. So did you write your book after or during? Uh, I wrote a little bit during the year that my dad passed in 2015. And then I kind of was a train wreck from just, I couldn't do anything. I was just screaming. And then when my son got his promotion, I realized in like 2018, I was like, it's time. And so I really wrote it. I wrote most all of it after, after I was able to make it through that. And, and, you know, my sister was like, gosh, you're, you're a really great example of someone who went through such a hard time, but has come out on the other side and can show people that they can come out on the other side. What would one thing be for someone who may be struggling? And there's depression on numerous levels, and sometimes we don't even recognize it, that helped you get through and get get you over that because it's it can be an incredible hurdle. Yeah, you know, I'm um, just... Gosh, you got to try, even though the, the only thing you want to do is isolate, you really have to try to not isolate. And I, I'm, so I really, really had to work at that to connect with those people in my life that um, I, I knew, you know, that I felt safe with, right. And then I would do things with to get me out. Everyone has their own journey with it and their own degrees of depression. So for me, that was a huge, a huge help. And I, I just reached out. I just, even though you don't want to, you want to take the oars and pull them in and just be like, I, I want to hide, but no, I would, I would reach out. Well, thank you for sharing. That's so heartfelt and, and being so authentic as you are. I, I really appreciate that. That's not an easy thing to share. Thank you for sharing that with us today. And thank you for being a guest on our show today and sharing all your pearls of wisdom. This has been such an incredible time. I really thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. For our listeners who would like to connect with you, go and purchase your book, where's the best place to do that? The the book is available for purchase on Amazon, but you can also go to my website, TeresaAllison.com. And uh, it's it's T-H-E-R, E E for empowerment, Allison.com. I know. There you go, right? It fits into your show. There you go. (laughs) I love it. It doesn't get any better than that. (laughs) There's a lot. There's You can read many things in there. There's a whole section on synchronicity, which is kind of cool. Um, and then there's a section on the book and then just other things on on the art that's in the book and stuff. It's, so. re- it's a really, yeah, I love your site. It's really great. It's very informative and it's just so, and it's just as good as the book. It's like reading a book going through your site. You never know what's going to come on the next page. I loved it. <laughs> this is so funny because my blog, I, I literally feel like I'm writing the next book on my blog. I feel like I'm living playing for keeps too. Mm -hmm. You probably are. Well, great. Well, we want to have you back on the show when that comes out for sure. Yes, there you go. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Allison, for being on the show, for sharing your incredible energies, your journey and your insights. This has been such a wonderful experience. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, thank you. Well, as we say, until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. 
For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.